Hey there guys, it's the shiny fur throw here, bringing you Raided Battle Spot Doubles. Yay, it's been a while. It's been a long time. I'm really, really sorry about how long it took to get this episode out to you guys. Hopefully, you know, a few of you guys are still stuck around through the dry season of my channel and are here to watch. So uh, let's dive into it. I'm going to go over the team because it has changed since the last time we did this. Um, we have Sasuna, the um, Adamant 6 IV Mega Mawa. Uh, to those who don't know, Setsuna was my first ever 6 IV hatch, and I just haven't had a, a chance to get a, uh, a 0 IV Brave Mawa yet. Um, really does help out, actually, when like Trick Room ends and I'm facing another Trick Room team. It allows Setsuna to outspeed other Trick Room Pokemon, which is actually quite handy in certain periods. That's the main reason why I've just been lazy when it comes to breeding a new one. Then we have Frace. The physically defensive Trick Room setting, Aromatisse. The reason why I love Aromatisse is because its hidden ability of Aroma Veil prevents all forms of, I suppose we call them mental status conditions, like Encore, Taunt, that sort of thing. Um, so, that guaranteed to get up a Trick Room unless it, she gets KO'd or flinched, because you can't Taunt her, that's, you can't Encore her either, so if she does, does something else first, she can go for Trick Room next turn. Really great because it also supports the partner, so the partner can't get locked into anything. Really, really works very well. We have Suki, the specially offensive Cresselia with Trick Room. Um, the reason why I prefer physically, uh, yeah, specially offensive Cresselia is because Cresselia is bulky enough as it is, and while I do have the helping hand, sometimes I just like to be able to, to, to attack with my Cresselia, uh, especially against things like Venusaurs and Amoongus's where she can just go for the Psychic, I've got a stab behind it and do a lot of damage to them that she wouldn't otherwise be able to do, able to do. I can't English, we know this already. Uh, we have Gumdrop, who's a new addition to the team, replacing my Chandelure. Chandelure uh, was really good on my team, it did give me a lot of you know, ways to deal with opposing fire types because a lot of them assumed I was flash fire and didn't go for heat wave. Uh, it also gave me a way to deal with anything that was quad weak to um, grass. But I just really like the way Gumdrop works on this team. It completely stops all forms of electric type moves. Electric? I'm, well, yeah, it does, kind of. But water type moves, I mean, where no water type can go for any water type move. It's really saved my ass in the playtesting against things like Belly Drama, Zoomerol, which, which can't go for its Aqua Jet, and will get outsped by most of my team in a Trick Room, so really saved my ass. Uh, a physically bulky set with just enough EVs to Oko, uh, Mega Ments, Garchomp, that sort of thing, with an Ice Beam, holding the Expert Belt as well to guarantee the KO on things that aren't running a lot of bulk. Really, really great, uh, and if it gets up boosts, it's even scarier. Then we have Faye, a new addition to the team, who is my Trick Room um, Sylveon. The build is sort of based on one of Cybertron's. I'll probably leave a link in the description below to uh, his Sylveon guide. Um, I'm actually running a Pixel Play, again, inspired by Cybertron. Uh, really, guys, subscribe to his channel, check him out. He's, a, he's one of the best YouTube VGC battlers out there. And I watch his content all the time. Couldn't give him a bigger shout out, even though he's like 10 times bigger than I am. And then we have Harriet, who is someone who's known on the team. I didn't want to replace her, but in the end, I just kept her with a new EV spread. Um, I can't for the life of me remember where I got the spread from. It was in, again, <laughs> I keep saying his name. It was in one of Cybertron's videos, but it wasn't Cybertron's build. So I will probably leave a link to the video in which he goes over the Hariyama build in the description below, so all the links down there in the doobly-doo. This intro has been five minutes, we should probably dive into it. Now, I have done some playtesting before I started recording, and I kind of lost some rating. I was in the 1700s, and I kind of went back down into mid-1600s, but you know what? I've stopped caring about rating. It's about having fun, and about showing you guys just how I work, really, I guess. Um, so the time this video goes up, I'm probably streaming, so once you finish watching this video, if you're watching it the, the moment it went up, Come down to the stream, and I do viewer battles, so just come on down, hang out, you know, maybe do some battles with me, and all that fun stuff. So as you can see, 1672, it's not the most ideal rating, I would like to have one that's higher, but really, I've stopped caring for rating because you can just have a bad luck streak and plummet back down. Uh, no matter how well you play, you are just going to lose some games because uh, you didn't get a certain role that you needed. As we see, 
what looks to be a semi trick room team. We've got the trick room setter in the Bronzong. We have um, a taunt encore a fake out user in the Lipod. So Aroma T is definitely something I want to bring, uh, just because it can't go for its encore taunt shenanigans. Um, a bit of a weakness to the Bronzong there. So I think I'm going to want to bring. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. More while can deal some damage to it, but not as much as I'd like with Sucker Punch. Um, Hariyama can go for the knockoff little damage. Gastrodon can go for Earth Power, but I assume this to be a Levitate set. It might not be though, because Charizard Y is definitely a common threat, so it might actually be Heat Proof, and he's bluffing the Levitate. Um, trying to figure out my lead. I think I want to lead Hariyama. I do want to lead Hariyama. And my opponent is probably going to want to set up the tri a Trick Room of his own, so I'm not going to... I, I might bring a Trick Room Setter, but I won't lead with it, I don't think. I don't think leading with a Trick Room Setter is going to be a good idea. And I really, really want to bring Sylveon as a lead, because I do have Shadow Ball on my Sylveon. That gives me two ways of dealing with the Bronzong. He might expect me to bring my Trick Room set up, which would be great, because his team looks slower than mine. Um, I've got to bring more wild, just need my Mega. Um... I really am going to need to bring Gastrodon to deal with the Mega Camera up to actually as well. So I'm not actually bringing any Trick from Setters, which could be a problem with the um, Lipard because I, I'm not bringing Aroma T, so I won't have the Aroma Veil. So I'm going to have to be careful to not fall into an Encore trap, really. That's what I have to be careful of here. So Protect, Fake Out, they are going to have to be used very scarcely, especially while Lipard is on the field. My opponent uh, goes ahead and leads with the exact lead I expected. That's the exact lead I was expecting. Bronzong and Lipard. Now, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna double up on the Bronzong. I am, because I don't think he's gonna fake it. Because he probably thinks that there's nothing I can do to the Bronzong. Now, it could be a very bad play, but as I said, I don't wanna lock myself into a fake out or a protect. I'm going for the knockoff and the shadow ball. I'm going full on hyper offensive on this lead. I'm knocking in very early, which could be a bad idea. He does go for the fake out onto the Hariyama, so he was expecting the knockoff. So I am going to get off my shadow ball, which is all nice and dandy, and that is going to do about 40%. He is unfortunately going to get up his trick room, but I am a trick room team, so this doesn't hinder me too much. My my team is slow, but as I, as I mentioned earlier, my more wild does outspeed a lot of things outside trick room, so. I'm going to have to be careful about bringing her in. Uh, the Lipard, however, is in a position where it's kind of useless. So I'm going to go for the knockoff and the Hyper Voice here. He might go for the Encore on my Sylveon. Um, not sure why, but he might. He actually goes for Sunny Day, setting up in advance for the camera up. So I'm going to have to be very careful around camera up now. Um, maybe try and stall it out as I'm... Whoa! Hang on, he went for the Explosion. Now that I was not expecting... KOing, well he didn't KO his Lipard, he didn't knock out his own Lipard there, okay. So he hangs on with his Focus Sash, he is going to get knocked out here though, that lead, that was kind of scary, he's got Trick Room, he's got Sunny Day, he's got both of these things up and running, and he's going to get, he's going to be able to switch into his uh, Camera Up and whatever he has in the back, next to Camera Up, which means I'm in trouble, I'm in a lot of trouble, I'm in doo doo. If he's got a grass, did he have a grass type? I, hmm. You think he would have? Yeah, he has chestnut. However, I will outspeed chestnut because he's. Yeah, I'm in a trick room. So he has got the grass type for support, and obviously, I'm going to be expecting him to go for the um, heat wave. However, I might actually outspeed him the first turn. Might maybe not. I've actually completely forgotten camera up speed tiers. I think he might protect. So I'm going to go for the ice punch onto the. Um, Chestnut and the Protect on my Sylveon. I'll keep her around one more turn because her Hyper Voice could be very beneficial. Because that, that, if basically, if he ends up protecting, well, here's what I, the plan is let Harriet go down, bring in Gumdrop, um, then go for the Hyper Voice Scald. Scald should still kill the, um, I think it just fit Eruption. Scald should still kill the Camera Act. Names are not my strong point, guys. Uh, the Edgecus would hammer into Sylveon. So I am going to get a switch into Gastrodon here. Gummy the ga Gumdrop the Gastrodon, or Gummy. Yeah, cool, whatever you want. So if he tries to protect on camera up to avoid the Scald, 
his chest knot should go down. So I am going to go for the Scald. Time Sword super effective, Expert Belt, Stab, some will reduce his power. I don't think it matters. So Scald onto the um, thing. And a Hyper Voice. Just to try and get the KO here. Just go straight for the Eruption. So Sylveon is going to go down, but so is the... Um, Camera Upt. I've said its name like three times and I keep forgetting it every time. Yeah, so that should be the end of Camera Upt. If it lives, this I'll be surprised. I am surprised. So I am going to lose Gastro Dodge as well here. Ah! That, that did not work out anywhere near as well as I thought it would. Uh, that's a problem. So now I'm going to bring in my... Obviously I had to bring my mobile my last Pokemon. I'm going to go for the Protect on the first turn. Try and stall out the Sun turns. Then I'm going to suck a punch. I'm basically going to protect, to bait out or protect from camera up. Because I would waste a turn of sun, waste a turn of trick room, and I don't think the uh, chestnut can touch me. I really just want to bait out or protect from this camera up. That's, that's really what I want to do here. As I protect first, so he did not protect from camera up. Quick guard. Okay, now that. I think I might have just lost. I think I might have lost. No, no. Trick room ends. Okay, we're still in this. Unfortunately, I have two 90% accuracy moves. So, yeah. Oh, dear. Do I go for Sucker Punch, risking him to go for quick guard? Rock slide will kill. Rock slide will, but if I, if I miss, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do it though. I'm doing it. It's my it's the wing. It's my wing condition. As he does protect on the camera, so he does finally reveal the protect. I did want to play rough the chestnut just in case. So best case scenario, I get a flinch on chestnut. Best case scenario. As he goes for superpower, that should not do 50%. Yeah, that's exactly does about what I thought it would. Okay. Sunlight fades, so he's lost the sun. Uh, I'm just going to rock slide again. That will KO camera up as long as I hit it. 90% chance against two of them. I think it's about a 75% chance. I, I nail both. Should be a dead camera up. As it is. And Chestnut should basically uh, be dead in the next turn. As long as, I, as long as I hit. He actually gets fully flinched. So this should be a win as long as I don't miss my player off. So that lead, hyper offensive. Almost took me out, almost made me lose the game entirely, but I am able to take a win here. So I'm actually very proud of that battle. My opponent, props to him, that was a scary lead. Guys, this series isn't just about me battling, it's also about the crazy things you'll see on Battle Spot. So take notes. Earlier today, I faced a Parasect that almost made me lose. And I really want to put that on YouTube. I saved the battle, I might put it on YouTube as a bonus video or something. So take notes when you see crazy things on the other side. Write those notes down. Ideas for team building. I've got so many of them from what I've seen the last couple of days. So obviously we are going to continue battling. That was quite a short battle, I have to say. Quite fast paced. Um, and we're going to get... Oh, did I do no? Okay, in party. I, I, you might have seen I have a second team there. And I'll go over that more perhaps next week. Th th this week we're just using my Trick Room team still because I only use it for like one week before all the stuff happened and I had to kind of slow my fingers down. So we're going to go ahead and challenge again. Rate has gone up to 1685. So if we win another one, we should go into the 1700s. But uh, that's, that's not, you know, we'll get our hopes up as we face Tin from Tokyo. Rating of 1642. And he's got Whimsicott. I never like seeing Whimsicott. Those things are always uh, very dangerous, even with Aromatisse around. Uh, speaking of Aromatisse, he's got a counter to that in Nidoqueen. Uh, Nidoqueen, not really a Pokemon you see very often in VGC. Uh, in fact, I've never seen one before. I've run one, but I've never seen one. That's very interesting to see. There's also the Suicune and the um, Lando, so I really want to bring Gumdrop. Gumdrop's Ice Beam kills the Lando, and... Um, as long as that Suicune does not run Snarl, Gumdrop beats it one-on-one. -on -one, unless it gets a freeze with Ice Beam. 
Um, and get, as long as she gets, you know, a boost from a, a school or something. And we also have Greninja there as well. Gotta watch out for that thing having Grass Knot and Charizard having Solar Beam. So, this team's looking, it has, Gumdrop can beat a lot of it, but a lot of it can also beat Gumdrop. So, hmm. Just looking at this lead, I kind of want to go Sylveon Hariyama without Trick from on that first turn. And have Cresselia and either Gastro or Morwar in the back. Let's be real though. What what kind of what what kind of damage could Sylveon do if he leaves with the Charizard? Not much. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna go Cresselia, Hariyama. And I'm gonna bring Gastrodon and Morwile. Be a bad idea because he has got the whimsicott. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring um I'm gonna bring Aromatisse instead. That whimsicott I think is gonna be a big problem. I could be, you know, locking in with four really bad Pokemon here. Whew. I think I think Aromatisse was the correct choice. Because I think that Whimsicott is gonna be a Bane, if he brought it, and yep, we lead with my Aromatis and Hariyama, what does my opponent lead with? Charizard and Whimsicott. Okay. Okay. Alright, you know, I've got, I got a plan for this. Um, can't taunt or encore. I'm going to Trick Room, and I'm going to fake out the Zard, I think. Yeah, I'm going to fake out the Zard. And the Aromatis is not provo uh, sorry, the Whimsicott is not putting any pressure on my party right now. Whimsicott being a very interesting Pokemon in that it can be run several different ways. It's almost as versatile as Cresselia, but quite frail. Uh, you can lead it with Charizard. You can lead it with well, you can lead it with anything, obviously, but you can lead it with a like, Gengar. For that horrible kind of fake tears kind of thing going on. I was like, do my fake out, so we didn't protect. Uh, I'm expecting to see Endeavor! Interesting. Interesting. So this is an Endeavor Whimsicott. In that case, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it at all. I kind of want to switch out Aromatis here, but all I've got in the back is Gastrodon and Morwai. That doesn't really pair up too well against the Zard. He's probably going to Heat Wave here, you'd think. So I can't bring in Morwai. You know, maybe I will target down that Whimsicott. Just so Hariyama goes down and I get a free switch into Morwai who can Rock Slide. I'm gonna, oh yeah, I'm gonna Moonblast it, and I'm gonna Ice Punch it. As he protects the Charizard, brilliant! Did he go for the Double Protect? I don't think he did, because that, that would have triggered Prankster. So, I think we might just got a free KO here, guys. Yep, that's a dead Whimsicott. Uh, I'm not sure if that was his plan, like he, he, he expected me to double up on it, and because he, he will get a free switch into something. And he has burned one of my Trick Room turns. Whimsicott, not really a Pokemon known for carrying Protect. As we see Greninja come in. Now, again, Greninja, not really a Pokemon known for carrying Protect. So, I kind of want to double up on it. Uh, I am going to do that. I am actually going to do that. Now, I'm going to Ice Punch it. I think that will be enough to take it out. No, you know, I'm going to knock off. I'm going to knock off. Even though it will be a resisted hit, it will do more damage. Uh, the reason why is because Moonblast, I think, does Oko most Greninjas, but Greninjas and VGC tend to have Focus Sash. So I'm doubling up on that Greninja. I don't expect it to have Protect. He's not protecting that Greninja. That's dead Greninja. It does not have the Focus Sash. So maybe I should have gone for the Ice Punch there, predicting that. Just so I could get um, neutral damage off on Charizard that's bigger than, you know, that. <laughs> As it goes for Fire Blast, uh, I'm assuming into Hariyama. Yeah, I can maybe live that barely. Yes, I do. Wow, this spread on Hariyama. Um, links in the description below. That's very, very bulky for Hariyama. Now, 
I've, I've been doubling up on the Pokemon next to Charizard. I'm expecting it to not want to protect. That's my plan. That's my, what I'm predicting. What I'm gonna do... Is... Oh dear. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna double up on the Zard. I really think he's gonna protect on the Nido Queen if he carries protect. Because I can Ice Punch it for a KO. So I'm Ice Punching the Charizard. Nido Queen goes to the Protect. It is slower than Zard in Trick Room though, so you might have gone for the double. Charizard should be dead. Oh my goodness, this was such a fast paced game. Uh, my opponent, he tried. He really did try. I just out predicted him on every turn. That is not going to be enough to finish off the Charizard, unfortunately. So Charizard will stick around one more turn. However, at this point, I don't think there's a way my opponent can come back. As I think my Trick Room st is still active. I'll just check my Aromatisse's moves. I didn't see Trick Room ending there. Let's see, I set up Trick Room and I did three. I have one more turn of Trick Room then. So Zard's probably going to want to protect, I'm assuming. I think bringing in Morwell was a bad idea. I just realized that. Because he's going to protect the Zard and go for Earth Power on the Morwell. Most likely. So I'm going to Moonblast the Zard. No, he's going to protect the Zard. I'm Moonblasting the Nido Queen. I'm going for the Mega and go for the Protect. To burn the Charizard's Protect so I can go for Fake Out. Uh, Second Punch to the next turn. That was a bad idea. I should not have gone into Morwell. What was I thinking? I could be, I could be sacking this battle. Um, as I do get off my Protect. I'm going for the Charizard to protect here. As it does. So I've basically just read every turn perfectly. As I'm going to get off Moonblast on the Nido Queen. I sort of do too much damage. Um, best case scenario, he tries to kill my remedies. As I get a crit, wow. Does go for the Earth Power. Sunlight fades. Trick Room ends, yes. I should, I should have kept note of that, actually. Because Trick Room goes off on the same turn as the Sun. So... Yeah, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go into Gastrodon here. I can't sack my Morwile. I bringing it out was a misplay, and that might have put me in a bad position. I wasn't thinking very well when I clicked that Morwile slot. <laughs> As Charizard does go for the double protect and gets it, predicting my sucker punch. Um I actually goes for sludge bomb on Aromatisse. Oh no! The critical hit! Well, my opponent has a win condition. And he's going for it. The Charizard is practically forced to attack now, though, so... It is practically forced to attack. I just want to go for that third protect and fail. Nido Queen should not be able to touch my Gastrodon, though, so I might just double up on the Charizard, even though it might protect. I think I misplayed towards the end here. I'm not sure what cost me the match. But my opponent had a win condition. And I suppose I got a bit too cocky, and that might that's giving him a it's giving him some breathing room. I'm not sure if it's enough though. He should not have a way of carrying Gastrodon this turn. He tries to go for the solar beam, he does die, and he goes for the solar beam, I'm assuming it was at least. Or, no, he couldn't even go for solar beam because the sun was gone, so I'm guessing he was going for the heat wave there. Goes for the Earth Power that will KO. Oh, whoa! Hang on a minute. Onto the Gastrodon. Oh, dear. He predicted my Protect on Morwile. Good game to my opponent. Um, I said it like five times now. It's probably annoying you guys, but I was in. I was. I was basically in so much control of that match, especially in the first couple of turns. I don't think there was a way I could have lost until I made that misprotect in bringing that mispro. That missed click. Oh my goodness. Until I made that mistake in bringing in the Morwile rather than the Gastrodon. But I was able to bring it back. And I'm quite happy with that win. So guys, um, we're not doing three battles anymore. I'm just doing two. It's a lot easier for me. Um, it allows me to record more of these in bulk. So if you like what you see, remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give the video a, th give the video a thumbs up. And favorite it as well. Really does show support 
for the channel. Helps me know that you guys actually enjoy the content I'm putting out, so gives me in it like a there's a reason to keep doing it because if, if no one's watching and no one really cares about it, then I, I you know we, 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 we know why am I doing it? Uh, also, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can follow me on Twitter at the Shiny Fur Throw. Uh, my YouTube, you, you're, you're probably watching this on YouTube, but that's just there in case someone links it somewhere else. And on Twitch, I am Ramos underscore online. So make sure you follow me in all the relevant places to be, you know, kept up to date with everything. Uh, I do daily streams Monday to Friday. So come hang out, viewer battles every weekday, unless stated otherwise. And you, to find out about that, you probably have to follow me on Twitter. So, yeah. I think, I think, uh, rate, comment, and subscribe part of the video is done, and I will see you lovely people on Wednesday. I, uh, I want to keep, I just want to warn you guys, my upload thing might change soon, like maybe one or two videos a week rather than three, and that's just because it is really hard to, up, to do all this recording and the stream at the same time. So, anyway, enough complaining, I'll see you guys on Wednesday.